Jason, as it is each and every week, the Lee Summit Town Hall podcast is brought to the good people by Budget Blinds of Lee Summit. Budget Blinds! Hey, did you know that the Signature Series Automated Shades, they provide a safer environment for children and pets due, Jason, to their cordless nature? All hail our Signature Series overlords. Hey, you can even program them. It's really cool. You just program right in your phone, allow you to use your heating and cooling only when you need it for maximum energy efficiency. All hail. Head on down to our friends at Budget Blinds of Lee Summit right in downtown on Main Street. Tell them Jason and Nick say it. Hello and welcome to this Friday conversation edition of the Lee Summit Town Hall podcast. We are back with John Bedoin from KC Communications and Media Matters and my sometimes partner every week partner, co-host, Wednesday, something Wednesday or another. co-host, Jason Norberry. We're back to continue our conversation about stories that we are looking ahead to that are come in 2020. On Wednesday, we talked a lot about some of the stories cons- surrounding the, the city hall and, and the city and downtown. Today, what we want to focus on are some of the stories that we're looking ahead to that are going to come out of the Lee Summit R7 School District. We finished our last conversation. We talked We talked about former superintendent, Dr. Dennis Carpenter, who has filed a lawsuit against the EDC. So let's start with the legal stuff again. Way to, way to, way to hit it on a positive <laughs> note, Nick. Way to go. You know, look, I figure if we start low and just build up, it'll, it'll be a little easier. All right. All right. So there are, John, I'm going to start with you. There yeah. are a couple of lawsuits yeah. still concerning the school district, and I think those are things that we are going to follow. Look, we probably aren't going to see any fast conclusions to these. But there are some stories to follow. Yeah, along. we we may or may not, and I'll, I'll leave the the real <laughs> finite uh, legal stuff to to my colleague here to the right. He he, he still um, has a license, so we can blame <laughs> anything wrong yeah, on him. Yeah, oh, that, thank you guys. Well, there and and someone uh, recently did, and I I, I fact checked that to make sure it was it was correct. I, I believe there are four lawsuits uh, kind of floating around right now. Somebody did a, a list recently, uh, but two of those are Jane Doe suits, and so you know we don't we don't know the names of the individuals, but. One stems from the alleged uh, rape that took place at Bernard Campbell, and that that names uh, the district and, and Dr. Carpenter and some of those uh, building and and SLC stands for Leadership Center leaders in that lawsuit, which these lawsuits often do. I, I don't think we can say enough that 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 there are certain people that were always going to be named in every lawsuit when it has to do with the city. The uh, superintendent's going to be one of them. Uh, the Danielle Nixon suit is, is floating around right now, and she is the individual who is the um, director of communications for Raytown C2 schools and applied for – was one of three finals for a job uh, in R7 that she did not get that eventually went to Kelly Wachel. Uh, that – when I wrote about that last fall uh, – in the fall, uh, that was supposed to go to mediation on December 9th, and the district has uh, told me very recently uh, in the last week – uh, that that did not go to mediation on the 9th, and they don't have a future date uh, set right now for that. So I don't know where that suit is, but it is still there. And then there's, of course, the Amy Gates suit, and Amy Gates is still uh, working in technology with our school district, and Dr. Gates has been with our district for many years and has filed suit over sunshine over alleged sunshine law violations, again, going back to the director of communications search and things that, that some of our leadership allegedly said or did not say during meetings about who should get that job and about about the, the opening some of the records on some of those emails. So there are a lot of things cooking right now. Do any of those get resolved in 2020? I doubt it, but Jason, that's probably where you would have your expertise, I'm sure. Well, I mean, one, I think you 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 know take into account, I think the ones, the Jane Doe suits are, and I don't want to say normal because any kind of an allegation no, sure. of rape is something that we don't want to take lightly, but, the, but it, personal injury actions, things of that nature are things that when you have a district of, you know, 20,000 students, a ton, bunch of employees, all the various and sundry pieces that we have floating around in there, bad stuff is going to happen on school grounds or in and around school grounds. And whether that's a slip and fall or something far more serious, and, and there are going to be lawsuits that are related to that. So those are, I don't think those are particularly, I don't want to say they're not noteworthy, but they're not unusual mm-hmm. that they exist. The, the ones that, that pertain but I, I to- would, I, would, I would counter, though, that, that safety is always- a concern, mm-hmm. and it's always a, a topic that is brought up by by residents. Right, and I think we're going to talk a little bit about safety as we go into, um, as we talk a little bit about the bond issue and some things coming up here as a whole, but I, I think it would be more if there were a pattern of those sorts of suits, we would see a little bit more of that, and hopefully, let's all be clear, we don't want a pattern of, of that kind of stuff going on, but I think the ones that are 
of more note, you know, the I, I will say, if nothing, the, the carpenter rain was not quiet um, as it ran through there. And, and those suits uh, surround things that happened while he was the superintendent. And we'll see where those go. Let me let me let me ask this question. And I I really don't know that know the answer to it is because Dr. Carpenter is no longer the superintendent. Mm-hmm. Does that mean that some of those that are related to his tenure will be resolved more quickly? Not necessarily. Um, basically, the short version is there are two kinds of acts that a superintendent can take. Acts that are official and acts that are personal. Um, and so in any of these lawsuits, as, the, as, as John alluded to, the superintendent is always going to be a named party um, in those suits. So sometimes the superintendent is named as an actor in the, you know, that the superintendent did X or didn't do Y mm-hmm. or what have you. And in, in the two, uh, the sunshine, sunshine suit and the, the uh, communications post, other communications post suits, Dr. Carpenter was definitely listed as an actor in those. Um, but uh, so there's those. And so a lot of times, you know, he's listed as a party because he was the person who was the superintendent at that time. Part of his, uh, you know, his mutual separation agreement uh, required that he participate in those actions or any actions that arise from the time he was there. You know, a lot of that's covered by insurance and things of that nature. Right. There are acts that he could have taken that are outside the scope of that. And that gets a whole different bucket of stuff that I don't think anything is necessarily alleging specifically. But um, but in general, it, his absence or presence, and um, honestly, the contract, the way that that thing wrote out, it requires his continued presence to be available for those as we go forward. And let's not forget, for, for those, uh, you know, and not to put people in different buckets, there were probably people that were uh, uh, dismayed about Dr. Carpenter's departure. There are probably a group of people that were celebrating Dr. Carpenter's departure, and then there probably is in any community a group of people who are indifferent about Dr. Carpenter's. There are a lot of people like, who? <laughs> Dr. Carpenter's <laughs> departure. What people need to be prepared for in 2020, I think, Nick, is is that we are going to continue to be in the news. That if you thought Dr. Carpenter wasn't going to uh, play a part in in Lee Summit R7 in the press in 2020, you are sorely mistaken. I don't know that he's going to continue tweeting at the district. I don't know if he's going to continue doing those kind of things. But his lawsuit against the Lee Summit Economic Development Council coupled with a number of lawsuits that he is either named as a, a main player or a secondary player and virtually guarantee that we're going to continue to hear about this into the new year. It's going to be reported on over and over. And I'll say this is that, you know, for better or worse, his shadow looms very large over the equity plan. Yes. Uh, and, and so whatever is going to come of that as we go forward is going to be something that, that that's going to, you know, even if he says no words about it at all, his, you know, he's going to be there, and that 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 shadow, that presence, will be around it. Well, I will say one thing real quick, John, just in, just in res, in response that yes, it will be in the news, but that's also kind of the it is news, so the news people it, are going to sure. are going to talk about it. But let's. Uh, Jason brought up an interesting point. Jason Jason brought up the the equity plan, which was I think the source, or at least the perceived source of of, of much of the turmoil. During during the tenure of, of Dr. Carpenter, and I think one of the things we're gonna we're gonna need to watch, and I think this is going to be a question that we ask as we go into the elections, as we're meeting candidates and seeing how they want to differentiate themselves, is what's going to happen with the equity plan. Is this just going to be quietly swept under the rug? Are we going to follow through? I know I know that the the consultant is is working. They are working with it, but it was just a twelve month contract. So is it going to be twelve months and done? Are we going to move on? Will that plan no longer be a part of the school state admission? Which, by the way, it is, and is one of the reasons they made the hire they did the last time. Is that going to be an issue when they talk to the new candidates for 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 the? replacement superintendent how is the equity plan going to play a role in the future of the district i think that's an important thing for us to watch well i think i I agree um and i think it's something that will be there and it could be that in the end and honestly this could have been this way from the very beginning um that the the net of these things i think is designed to say here are some things that you guys can do and teach each other and do better to do better in your classrooms and and give the students a better experience right these that's the sort of the net here are a set of tools you can have that may all happen but that's not the conversation we had that was not the conversation but i think that but in the end that were in the beginning that was the idea 
is that we need to deal with it because we and and part of that is making the raising awareness of these issues and dealing with those sorts of things and we may get those all of those things may happen right and we may get them and there may be a a celebration at the end of the whole thing we may extend this out for a couple of years because they commit or as you put it it could i don't even want to say die a quiet death because it could quietly become very successful but we never know about it and i think that part of what we which want isn't to find necessarily out, a bad thing either right what we want to find out is like how is it actually making an impact going forward and and, and that's what that's where i that's the question that i have i, I don't think this topic's going anywhere uh, anytime soon that we we're going to have candidates that that are uh, that are we're going to have candidates that are going to want to discuss it. Uh, it. I think we're going to be all over the board on the level in which they're able to discuss this. I mean, we look at the, there's six candidates right now. We're going to end up, I bet we end up with double digit candidates. We'll, we'll probably have more candidates for school board than we do for city council. That's just a prediction on my end. Well, good. Cause uh, it pays <clears> way better. So that makes <laughs> yeah, a lot right. of sense. Uh, I guess I said it in my last column. It's arguably a, a exponentially harder uh, and more thankless job right now than, than probably city council. And yes, we're paying our council members and we don't pay our, our school board members. That's a hundred percent volunteer position. I think that topic's not going anywhere. There are, uh, there are groups like Suburban Balance and some other groups that have really uh, grabbed hold of, of that and, and, and for a lot of positive reasons in the community have said, we can't let this topic go. Whether Dr. Carpenter's here or not, we can't let this topic go. I think the unfortunate part of that conversation is that for just a various amount of reasons, the school board uh, and Dr. Carpenter both uh, failed at, at building consensus uh, to help move that that needle, they 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 could not build consensus. They could not move the plan. Uh, they hit a stalemate. I don't know that the stalemate continues, but we but the part of that conversation has to live on with this new school. We we could potentially have three brand new school board members. I I, I don't think, regardless of who gets elected, I don't think that the topic goes anywhere. But before we get into, I want to move on in a, in a, in a second to talk talk about the the school board, its role, and, and the candidate candidates for, for that election come up before we get there the other piece to the to the equity thing is is we had a very awkward and public conversation about race when th- through that very. it was a emphasis on the awkward awkward <laughs> awkward but is that conversation gone now because we haven't had that conversation since does it need to still go on will we will we see that go on are there candidates that are going to going to bring that up what, what do you guys think is going to happen there I think that there are candidates who will bring it up. Um, and, you know, I mean, uh, my record on this, on this podcast is pretty clear. I think that they should. Um, and I think it's a conversation that should be had. But, but I mean, I think that that's it. And, but the bigger question is even that, you know, I, I don't think it can be avoided. I think John's right. There are, there are organizations that are out there that have a vested interest in making sure that these questions uh, remain in the public eye. Um, and, it, and, and so it's not, I think, as important – I think it will be an issue regardless. It can be a a contentious or a really – it's going to be a challenging issue regardless, but it can be a very uh, combative issue, a very sort of negatively addressed issue, or it can be an issue that can be addressed. There are a number of ways – any of these candidates have an opportunity, for instance, or the current school board members to really work through that. Um, you know, John, you mentioned the, the lack of consensus. I mean, that's that was shown on the the school board vote for the first, especially for the first go around right. for the consultant. And, and I'm not sure nothing about the consultant changed between the first vote and the second vote. The only thing that changed was the public furor right. over the things that were said from the dais. And, and you know, that's its own. And we, I think everybody would like to not have that particular. So there are ways I think to at least make an attempt to address these issues in a way that is not rough from the, uh, the dais. And hopefully we'll see some of that from these candidates. Well, real quick, here's the wild card on whether, so the 30,000 foot question, Nick is, does the equity discussion continue? I think it all comes down to the next superintendent. That's going to be who decides. Next superintendent's, in theory, going to be na- voted on, named on January 23rd. That Therein lies that, regardless of who it is, whether it's Dr. Miller or any of the three outside uh, finalists that are going to go through the, the interviewing and vetting process throughout January, that's who's going to have to take that ball and run. Someone will have to do that in a way that Dr. Carpenter could not or would not. John, you and I are former reporters. Yes. Jason, you are a known media critic. <laughs> You're <laughs> Listen, that's that, You are a trained That line's a mile long. <laughs> you are a trained attorney. All okay. of us all that's of us have professional training 
to ask questions, to observe and ask a question. I want to, does this question need to be asked publicly of our school district concerning the process of hiring the next superintendent? After a very, I'm going to say it again, a very public and very awkward conversation on race, all four of those finalists are white. Is that a question that needs to be asked? I think it's a question that can be asked, but one thing we don't know, um, at least at this point, and I don't think we will know, is what was the pool of applicants. Um, we'll never. You're right. We'll never know. We'll that. never know that. Yeah. And so, I mean, it. Look, I but mean, but does that mean you still don't ask the question? No, I think you do ask the question. I mean, who knows what the answer will be? But the answer could be we can't say because there, were, you know, I mean, if there weren't any black applicants, they're not going to say that because they have HR things, and and if they're, you know, we went through the process and we used this scoring system, which we may get to see, and these are the numbers that came through the process, and that's what we have. Um, it's hard to say what that will be, but I think it's, you know, I mean, if you want to talk about optics and, you know, I know John likes to talk about this sometimes, uh, is, you know, that may, that's, you know, the, if you want to roll that in, we had the last person of color who was in the administration leave in the fall and that, that and none of this is an accusation against the school district or the board. But no, I think this when is just- you, when you couple these things together on the backs of, the, the very difficult time we had dealing with issues of race and the termination of the super of the district's first black superintendent. It's certainly, if you want to pick this picture, it's a picture that looks like we have some, we have a lot of questions left to answer about how our seven deals with issues of race. Yeah. The, the, we're, we're chasing our tails. If we start to go down the road of why are the final four candidates all white? And, and I will, I will say this also, we don't, we don't know, uh, the, the 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 background of each one of these candidates uh, either we, we we know where they're from uh, we can google search them and fi- find out you know some some probably very uh, 30,000 feet things that they did in their district but this interview process will vet out some of those more finite details if we're just going to talk about race this is going to be uh, a very long year i think we're, we 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 i we cuz it's it's it again we're chasing our tail we're we're not going to know who the candidate pool was so we're not going to know why there are no people of color in the final four candidates. So we're not going you know, to – do you see the, 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 the problem that we're running into here? We're, ne- we're never going to answer these questions. So we're going, to, we're going to bury ourselves in that same awkward conversation. But unlike last, year, last year's awkward conversation, this one doesn't get us anywhere. We're not going to start over with new candidates. Right. And I, no, I think I think you're I think I think you're both correct. And I and I was really more coming at it from you know that's a question that's going to be asked quietly amongst groups. It's already being and, asked. And, it's, and, it's, right. it's out on but, social media. But, but but then the 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 other perspective, the reason I come forward is it, it, is that a question that that people in our positions should be asking. And I and I just I think it, I think it's out there. It's worth talking about. But but you're right. I mean, you're 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 never going to know what the pool was. You're never going to know how that how that process got to where it is. But I think it's a question that's going to be out there. Yep. And so, John, you talk a lot about how how about optics and about how the district passes their message. They should be ready for that question. They and should, there be. should be an answer. Yep. Right. And, and just because a reporter knows uh, <laughs> he or she is ninety nine percent sure how that question is going to be answered, doesn't mean you don't ask the question. I, I absolutely look, agree. Uh, look, that's a that's a ninety nine percent of the questions I ask. I know the answer, <laughs> but I want you to say you it. have right. to ask the question. I, I would say yeah. that it, you want to you you probably we need to ask that question, and the district needs to be prepared to answer it. But it may not be the point. It may not be. It's not one piece it's not like right. on and of itself enough to be right. I, I want to say actionable but right. uh, you know and that sort of thing but it is colored and i hate to, i'm sorry that's the wrong word to use here but there we go but the, the you need view, to get, go to time out yeah the view of of that decision yeah wherever however it was come to right. is is tinted by the stuff that has happened in the last year yeah. or two years and so it's inevitable which is why the question has to be asked and and i think you guys are right the the district has an obligation to be ready to answer that question, even if the question is, we can't say it. You know, if, if I, I'll just say this: if I were if I were really fighting for equity in this district right now, I wouldn't be asking why the four candidates are white. I would be asking, what are we doing with Don Smith's position? Where's that? How, are we going to hire 
an equity assistant superintendent of equity? If so, what is that person going to do? What are their measurables? And are we going to specifically look for a person of color to take Don Smith's place? I think I think those have to be higher end questions than than gnashing our teeth over over the the superintendent. And I don't think anyone's asked that question. Where is that position? She's been gone since the fall. And I'll go beyond that. Is that that follows into the equity plan, right? What are what is the district doing right. to address the fact that in a district where twenty five percent of the students or people of color that we have zero percent of the administration is hired or under well under that 25 percent for our teachers and what have you what are those steps we're taking and that is those are the things amongst the things that the equity plan is supposed to help us achieve or help the district achieve and those are the questions that we'd like to see answered well and i and i think what what we're getting to here too is that we hope that these are questions that people have and if you have them you know these are the things you need to talk to your school board representatives about these are to make sure that those questions are being asked as we go through this this process yeah. of hiring because the next superintendent they're going to decide what happens with with that former position held by Don Smith. They're going to decide yep. what the administration team is going to look like and then the school board, however that body is defined after this election, is going to going to have to decide how to how to back that that play or whether or not to back up. Let's let's move on a little bit and let's let's go to the uh, let's let's go to the bond issue first. Yay. That is, look, we are at a historic (laughs) ask. The Missouri school districts have not had an ask this big before. However, if you look at the things on the $224 million price tag, which it may or may not be that, the language has not been approved by the school board yet. So let's, let's, let's start there. But if you look at each of those individual things, there are strong cases for them. So, guys... The bond issue. What are we looking to in the next year? Well, uh, first, uh, everything about that bond issue centers around whether or not the voters believe some or anything that's happening uh, right now at coming out of the Stansbury Leadership Center. We, uh, I, I firmly believe that that every one of those items, whether it's the middle school or security or 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 Mason Elementary, or, I firmly believe that those are obviously all things that that have been well thought out, vetted. They've been discussed. They, they they've crunched the numbers. We have great facilities people in our district that have worked on these things, but they are up against that invisible screen of do I believe what's happening at SLC? Do I believe that these men and women are making the best decisions for me? I think because our district has been so tone deaf in the past uh, to the public, especially in the last three years, has been so tone deaf to what the public has said, and and, obvi- and we're tone deaf years ago when the levy failed, that they don't see that piece. They don't see that they're up against that they're not up against the dollars or, or, you know, there's this whole discussion about, wow, there's no tax increase or no, you know, we, we all know that stuff. We all know that what, what happens to to your tax bill, uh, whether or not you vote for this and the, the answer is very little. However, 224 million doesn't come for free. Uh, but we're, I don't think we're up against those dollars. We're up against, do I believe what these people are telling me? And do I believe that they're going to use this money wisely? Well, okay. So there's, that's a good question. And I think you raise, and, and I've seen some of your, your posts and, you know, your columns and, and your posts on social media and the, not your specific, but the, the right. comments that follow it, right. I think uh, often illustrate a conflation of a bunch of issues. And, and so I wonder, you know, there are people who complain that the classroom sizes are too large or the teachers are paid too much or not enough or, you know, jan- there aren't enough janitors or what about this? And right. what about my baby? And I don't like sixth graders being, in the, you know, blah, they go through like a whole big list of things, not all of which have in- almost anything to do with this bond issue, but yet they also do. Right. And then we, when you can put that on top of the, the superintendent issue yep. and the school board election and the school board you know, turmoil and the lawsuits and the lawsuits and all the other bits and pieces. It's, it's an interesting question because if, from a, from an objective standpoint, you know, if we look at it from, it's like, you know, the, the question is, can we afford it as a district? Are these things that need to be done? And if the answer to those two questions are yes, then yes seems to be the right kind of vote or, you know, and I know that there are people out there who are like, well, I'm never going to vote for anything that costs right. taxes ever. Right. But you know, those people were not going to, there's no convincing someone who takes that particular stance. No. So, how do you, how, how does the district thread that needle then? Where is that? How do you figure that out? I mean, I think they take the they take the stance that sort of objective stance, and maybe according to what you're saying, don't pay as close attention to the, the softer factors 
um, that surround it. No, I, I, how do they thread that needle yeah. and and yet maintain um, you know integrity in what they're trying to do? Well, I look at eight or nine years ago uh, when Dr. McGee was told very soundly and very directly by the business community, "Do not try to run that levy. Don't don't do it." And we did it, and it failed. And then we went into this thing called cost containment, which was just a whole lot of fun for so many people. And we're still coming out of cost containment uh, as a district. Dr. McGee he didn't listen to the business leaders. However, he did what he thought was right for the district. So that, that there's absolutely that balance there. He tried to get that thing passed. It didn't get passed. So he went into the mode that he had to, which is all right. Where are we going to cut, guys? Where you know what what fourth grade and fifth grade strings get cut, and what sports get cut, and all these things. So we had to do those things. This is not an operating level. This is a bond. So it's a, it's a, obviously it's a different deal. But it still comes down to selling it. It still comes down to what are the people telling you? Are they telling you that there are too many things right now being being bandered around? I think this is a very interesting piece of this, which is if you don't hire Dr. Miller. You are going to ask the person that you just didn't hire because this this new superintendent's not going to start to what July one is that right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So next fiscal year. So you're you're going to ask the person you didn't just hire to take that bond across the finish line. Now they can't they can't promote the bond, but they can do educational pieces for the bond. You're going to ask all those people uh, that maybe were supporting Dr. Miller to take that across the finish line. If you do hire Dr. Miller, then she takes it across the finish line, and then you have people asking, well, "Why'd you spend tens of thousand dollars on a consultant team that just brought you a candidate that that worked?" you know, inside the building. So, and those are all peripheral uh, discussions to this, but they, they go to the heart of the whole issue, which is, are these people making the right decisions for us? Are they, are they doing what's right for, and for my pocketbook and my kid and in the classroom and in the buildings and all these things that that's, those are fair questions. I think the district has to really take a hard look at how many things that they're piling on themselves right now, trying to just do the superintendent and the bond and manage the lawsuits and, and, man, and most importantly, manage the, the message in the media, which they're still not doing. They're not going to hire a communications director until probably after uh, the superintendent's hired. I want to needle you just a little bit. Sure. You you mentioned early on, you talked about that there is a perception of, of people, whether whether it's on the dais for the school board or whether it's, it's administration at, at, at the leadership center. You alluded to that there's a little bit of mistrust, that maybe they have been tone deaf. I was wondering if you could give a couple of, of examples there so that people kind of know what you're talking about. Yeah, I well, I I think I think the administration was definitely tone deaf during the levy 8 or 9 years ago. I think the administration has been has was was tone deaf during the the transition from David McGee to outside of David McGee. We had a very public fight uh, among uh, among school board members and Dr. McGee during that time. Uh, if you remember, we had <laughs> at one point we had uh, dueling press conferences where one person had a press conference and another person had a press conference. I think we, I think we got a lot of tone deaf out of the uh, Stansbury Leadership Center about what the people were saying about that. I think people were upset during the the David McGee thing, and 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 I think in some ways for the wrong reasons. Because you know, are we are we upset because what the guy get pay, gets paid? Are we upset because of the of the other personal, not personnel, personal issues that were going on during that? Are we upset about something else? You know, what where, where's really our anger coming from? And I think we started to chip away at the trust uh, from from the levy from a long time ago, more recently during the transition. And we started to chip away at the trust. And, and also communicatively, we have not gone to bat for this district, I don't believe, from a communication standpoint, and really tried uh, to, to, to sell all sides of, of what's going on in our buildings. We've changed we've changed so much of what we do from a communication standpoint. And then we've been buried in this last year with what I consider obviously less than, than stellar news. That stuff is still news. I'm the first one in line that says, Hey, if it's news, it's news. You don't, you don't pick and choose what's news. That's news. Lawsuits are news and, and superintendents leaving are news and superintendents getting paid out $1.2 million. There's another way that we're tone deaf. I mean, we're, we're, we're writing these checks uh, to these former superintendents and then we turn around and do this bond. We're, we're, we're not hearing what people, People are really upset about, and I think it's time for a public forum to get people and let people holler and scream a little bit, and let them let them sound off about this instead of doing it on social media. That I think there's innumerable ways that the district has been tone deaf to the community, and if that results in a failed bond in April, I, I don't know when they'll ever put a bond on again. Jason said it earlier. He said you're talking about things that aren't really related to the bond, but then they kind of. Are. Right. Yeah, and so I, 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 I think our role—it's—it's it's always important 
you know, Jason and I try to do this too, too that, that a bond issue has absolutely nothing to do with the operating costs, with hiring staff, with paying salaries mm-hmm. to a new superintendent, to teachers, to janitors, whatever. This is about – a bond issue is about buildings, physical things. However, you're right that if if someone is upset because they don't like that we've paid – one point two million dollars right. to 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 see the last two superintendents go bye bye. They might not trust the district for anything else. So those are I think that's I think that's one of the things we're gonna be watching is, is how that conversation happens. Right. And I'm gonna I'm gonna revert back to our, our initial discussion about equity. And Jason, you, you you alluded to this a little bit in that it's a very nuanced conversation. And I think the thing where we all missed was that we didn't allow ourselves to talk about all of those nuances. We got stuck on one thing. And, and and just I want to just remind people of one thing that the we're cutting this real close too with with uh, with the final discussion on the board and and the ballot. The board votes January twenty third, and the election board has to receive uh, uh, its notice of election by January twenty eighth. That's, that's a that's, I'm not saying we don't do quick turnarounds, but if there's any consternation about that the night of the twenty third, it's it's not happening in April. Right, and and therefore we're not happening until twenty twenty one. Probably they won't yeah. put a. I don't think they – actually, I'm not sure they can put a school board thing on until April um, on the, as they go. Or if they do, it has to have a higher percentage of the vote. It has to so. go four-sevenths or something. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. It, it gets it gets more difficult, and yeah. and we're going to see that go. So I guess that leads us into the elections themselves well, for the I, board. I, yeah, I, I think, John, what, what you were just saying about, you know, it's it's about people have to have trust in the, in, in the district. Right. So here's where that trust gets built. We have another election coming up for three, oh, three seats on the school board. Here, what are the questions? What are the questions that people should be asking of these candidates as they as they meet? What are the questions they should have of candidates and current board members about their role and what they're supposed to do in their job sitting on that dais? I mean, I think we'll we'll start with the easy one, right? We we have had now two superintendents in a row in which the board has had a very difficult, if not complete, failure of an opportunity to resolve conflict uh, that existed there. Then some of that is. You know, some of that weighs more heavily on the superintendent. Some of that weighs more heavily on the board, but it's there and that relationship. So the question, and we, we attempted to ask this one last year, um, you know, how's your relationship or how do you deal with those? And I think this year, the, the it's a tougher question to ask is like, what about, you know, maybe we can, this is fresh, right? It's not three, four years ago when right. Dr. McGahey is gone um, and almost no one was on the board that was on the board then is on the board now. You know, this is a really fresh thing. And, and I think that question of, you know, by the time these people are elected, superintendent's going to have been hired. Yep. Um, they don't get to vote on that. They only get to deal with the annual budgeting stuff, you know, and that ongoing relationship. How are they going to deal with that ongoing relationship? And those answers, I think, are going to be really telling. And you know, we we talk as a community, and and we've done this with the the vision twenty years ago, or with Lee Summit three hundred and sixty, or what we're going through now with strategic planning about where are our leaders and what are, what do we want out of our elected leaders? What do we want out of these people? What, what makes the ideal candidate? It's impossible to put all these things together in one candidate, but, but right now I think we need, we need business minded people on our school board. Um, I used to be a huge advocate of, Hey, let's get the parents on the school board, the people that are you know, in the trenches every day. And I still think that's a good idea uh, or people that have been through that process with the school district. But at the same time, uh, I think we have to, we have to look at, at people that, that, that can look at a budget and understand what they're looking at. They can look at uh, uh, some long-term strategic planning and, and can talk to facilities people and can talk about overcrowding, can talk about uh, uh, redistricting. We're not done redistricting. I mean, there, there's, you know, if, if, if this middle school gets built and if we need a fourth high school in, in 15, 10 or 15 years, and you know, guess who's going to be coming back for another bond uh, after this one? I mean, you're not going to build a high, you're going to put a $110, $120 million high school up without a bond. And, and so I, I think, I think what we have to, what the, the level of, of elected official to, and, and either Jason brought this up or someone did the level of elected official has elevated in Lee summit. It has to man coming out of 2016 and 2017 with, with, with some of what we saw on both council and school board. G- give me a break. We, we have, we've, we've had to elevate the level of, of, of who we need making these decisions. And with that comes a, a hell of a lot of responsibility. I think, I think a lot of that goes back to what we, what we were just talking about too, is, is asking questions about how they're going to deal with, deal with and approach hiring a superintendent. Right. Right. Cause that's number one job of school board, hire the superintendent, hire that person to lead. Number two job, budget. 
is yep. what you're really looking at. Dollars. A, 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 but that you can't do that job unless you have a working relationship with the superintendent because the superintendent is going to put that budget together, who's going to hire the administration team that's going to do the re, that's going to lead the redistricting efforts, that's going to lead the planning efforts to come up with new buildings when and if they're needed. Yep. So it all comes down to the, the I think the questions really come come down to how they are approaching the relationship with the superintendent, whether it's hiring it or working working with an existing one. And I'll I'll step on you know I think how the 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 candidates deal with the you know talking about the equity plan like you know we don't know what the outcomes are at this point and what the ends are but you know uh, we mentioned this there's a lack of there was a lack of nuance um, that people had last time and anytime we have these difficult conversations, whether they're about budget or race or socioeconomic status or any of these sorts of things that everybody's a little uncomfortable, people tend to revert to, you know, flinging out to the edges and yelling about their thing that they understand and they feel comfortable in and not listening. The school board should not be the people that do that. They should be the people that kind of can can suss through some of those things, work through the stuff that may be a little bit uncomfortable and express some nuance. And, and I think both on you know, how do you deal with the rebuilding trust? How do we deal with the equity plan? What do we do with the superintendent? You know, what is our overall budgeting thing? All of those things require that capacity to, to analyze, to process, and to give a, a, a fuller answer than just, you know, I'm again it or I'm for it. <laughs> well, I think, that's right. the, I think that's the leadership thing, that extra leadership thing that, that John was, was talking about is, is can they suss through all of that stuff and then lead us the public, the voters, through that conversation. And I'm going to say that's probably the thing that was missing over the last 18 months was that there wasn't anyone really trying to to lead a nuanced conversation and to, to bring everyone in. Yeah. I'd, you know, the, the, the role of the elected official has, has really been a roller coaster in Lee Summit uh, ever since I've been there and even before that in my, all my years. Uh, at the examiner covering Lee summit, um, you know, and, and, and how high or low profile that is. We've come to a point now where we're, we're, I guess the roller coaster possibly is heading back up the hill, if that's a good thing, um, because we're, we're seeing more candidates running. The days of, of, of two unopposed candidates for school board are over. They've been over for a couple of years now. Uh, we're not seeing that at city council level, but we're seeing that at the school board level. So there is more interest, but 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 with that comes a little bit of the skepticism on my part as a former reporter to say, why are you interested in this? What do you want to accomplish on school board? And I think that's a fair question. That's 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 the most basic journalism one hundred and one question that that I would pose to all six candidates right now is what what do you want to do if you can give you get one thing done in, in three years? What and is it? Be, and you'll be lucky if you get that one thing. Well, and yeah, you'd be real lucky if you get that one thing. And is your one thing thirty thousand feet, or is it really in the weeds? And 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 but I you know I'd like to see these school board members uh, really diving into you know what they're supposed to, not just showing up for graduations and, and EDC lunches and things, but but being being out and being part of the community and being a, being held accountable for what they say and why they say it and what their actions are and 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 how how they're leading. We ask that of our city council and we pay them, of course. We ask that of them. Let's ask that of our school board. I, I don't disagree, and I think that that's one of the things that's come out both elected officials in the last three years especially there's been so much more scrutiny um at this local in the lee summit level i mean if you look at the last election last you know in 2018 specifically when all of the city council seats were up in the mayor's seat and we had the extra city council seat and all the bits and pieces were running through that process and we had the school board seat all of that thing there was you know we covered everything we did interviews and forums you know, the, we had the traditional chamber forum. There were other coverages from all kinds of stuff all over the place. They're getting more scrutiny than they ever have. I mean, long gone are the days, and these are related, right? Long gone are the days where those unopposed candidates right. could just do rubber stamp. I mean, that was the big criticism for McGahee, right, is that right. the board was just a rubber stamp for what he wanted. And, and, and you know, long, those days are over. That, that stuff, they don't get – that they can do that without attention, without criticism, without asking those questions or having to answer those questions are gone. And it, and it has raised the bar a little bit on what we expect for our elected officials. And I think that that's, that's a good thing. Let me, let me ask this question. How can the people demand more of when they're talking to candidates or even after the election when they're talking to their, their school board officials, how can the people demand more interaction so that they can hold their elected officials accountable? 
Oof. Well, I, you know, it's such a different animal when you're on city council than when opposed to when you're on school board. There, there's almost this uh, expectation, and, I, and I, I'm trying to remember where this comes from. Is, is there a, is there a is there a hard and fast rule that council members do have those those public forums quarterly or once a year? No, no. they they just do that. Okay. Right. Well, I, you know, I I I, I, I the, that may be a place to start. You know, I I think that that school board members sometimes. In the past, and maybe even currently, I'm not sure. But when they've come off the dais, they've said, "You know, my 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 hands are done with this." That there there is a there is a a not just a perception, a reality. And I'll, I'll say it from my end that the school board members in the past have not been responsive at all to emails, uh, have not been responsive to phone calls, have not been responsive to to citizen concerns and things like that, because that's never really been their role. They they you know we we, we a couple of years ago we didn't even have school board members with district emails. You remember that? Yeah. So I mean, we're 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 just now turning the corner. Of accountability with these school board members, so the the your 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 question's great, and I I think the answer is it's just going to take more time. We're it's going to take more time of of their role changing a little bit for for them and for the community to understand what the role of the school board member is. And I think that you know I mean if you look at you know you go back two or three years. I mean, when we started this podcast, one of the things we got to a chance to do was sort of re kickstart some of those forums for these for the for the districts, and and now the the can or the council members themselves are doing it with the city's help and you know i don't like it that much but it's good that they're out there talking to the people i just want to be in control of the questions but i think the same sort of thing it's it may require you just always want control i want control <laughs> uh but the the district probably needs to set up a time where you know where whoever their communications person is can set up a time and says all right we're going to have two school board members because yep. i'm sure three you have all kinds of sunshine law stuff and noticing things you have to deal with Probably, uh, but some number of school boards are going to come. Members are going to come and sit, and you can come and ask them questions and talk to them, and they can hear from you directly outside of the you know three minute time frame that you're allowed during public comments once per month. And but that's going to take something that the school district is going to have to do to help go through that. I mean, look, if they want to come on to a a Lee Summit Town Hall, Town Hall, Town Hall, well, I'm sure we'll be happy to help set one up. But I mean that, but that may I think in the end. It's a little bit different. I mean, I, right. I will say this is like, you know, as a volunteer commission member and probably one of the more public ones as a whole, as the, as the planning commission, mm -hmm. um, I don't have a, dis I don't have a city email and, and nobody really sends me, I mean, you can get my information. Right. It's not that hard to find, but it's, but I mean, you, it's out there because as I think as a volunteer person, even though they're elected, that the level of expectation is a little bit different, but right. it's something that can be adjusted somewhat to account for that. Cause I think to, to expect a volunteer person to book a room and deal with those sorts of things and all that stuff is a bit much, but that's something that I think they are seven. They are seven people can can manage on their own if they want to do that. And just real quick, I'll add that that this I think this continues to be an, an evolution of of how we're doing things, how school board members act and react and 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 uh, communicate with the, the public is is it's very malleable right now it's a work in progress and we we've seen that with with r7 as a whole we're, we're communicating differently now in r7 through social media than we ever have before we we held a forum for dr carpenter when he was hired years ago we held a forum at least summit west to to answer community concerns i i don't know that you would have ever seen that in this community before that and that was a nod to okay we got to do things a little bit differently we we're, we're adding uh, school emails uh, or district emails for for school board members. That's something that you would have you would have never seen before. The R seven newsletter has has changed. So we're 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 switching up some things. We we just announced for the first time that I can remember ever we announced the four finalists for school board. That is a direct result. I'm not going to do a victory lap over that. But that's a direct result of what happens here and what happens in the community. Saying please be just a. a just show us a modicum of a little more transparency. Show us a little bit more of what you're doing and why you're doing it. Tell us who's part of this process. And all of a sudden, we get the names and and vetas of the four candidates. That that that's a continuation of 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 growth, I think, in the district. Well, and I think I think that's that's what I was alluding to with that question is is you know the people have to have to demand that interaction. They have to yeah. demand that accountability. And you can do that, whether that's through email, through phone calls, through showing up at the meetings and asking questions. 
through, you know, hey, listen to this podcast and tell us questions that we should ask you. Absolutely. A little bit of self-promotion for yeah. myself there. But I think I think that's the thing is, is, is you know, and, and Jason, we open this podcast every time with every Wednesday with, you know, how you can make a difference. And that's because we really believe that locally you can affect more change in your backyard than you can anywhere else. Guys, as we wrap it up, do you have any other questions that you think are, are important that people are asking of these candidates as we, as we look ahead to the next election? I, I just have one thing. I uh, – I think, you know, I don't, I'm not big on buzzwords for the new year and things like that, but we're, when we're looking ahead, I, th- I think we have, to, uh, we have to continue to, to ask of our elected officials to lead uh, by example. And, and that's, that's something that I hope that we can carry into the new year. There, there have been a couple of instances this year, and I'm not going to get into the weeds on this, but there have been a couple instances of things that have been said on the school board dais, uh, of things that that our our school board members may have tweeted that that absolutely they, they don't just go against the, the the pillars of what we try to teach at least some of cares and what we try to tell kids in elementary to do as far as respect and things like that they're just they're just they're just blatantly uh, disrespectful and 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 in bad taste and in bad form we've got to demand better of that part part of the growth of this community has to be again not just attracting better candidates but 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 saying hey we we kind of agree with these things that we do at the mayor's character breakfast and we kind of agree with these things that we're telling our kids at, in school and we kind of agree with these things that 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 we that we preach over and over again man let's start let's start acting in that manner and let's start acting uh, and let's start treating volunteers with respect and let's start acting in that manner. That's, that's, that's something I, I it may not be remotely close to what your question was, but that's something I like to see in the new year. I think it's good. And I think that we have, I mean, look, we, w- there were a lot of uncomfortable and difficult conversations last year, especially with the R seven. And those questions have not been answered. Um, you know, the, all the stuff that happened, all the things that were said from the dais, there has never been, closure from a lot of that sort of stuff. And I mean, with the exception of the, the termination of the superintendent, but that didn't answer all of those questions or give responsibility to the things that were said and done. So that's true. You're right. As we, as we come through this, it's like, as the equity plan comes back up as the new superintendent comes on, are we going to be able to have those conversations um, in a, in a healthy way um, going forward? I hope so. Uh, not holding my breath, but I do hope so. Well, I think that's going to wrap up our, our discussion for, for this week. I, I hope everybody enjoyed kind of our look ahead at the stories. Stories we're looking forward to, the stories we plan on covering. There's going to be a lot more. So so please follow along. So go on your, your favorite podcast device. Find the Lee Summit Town Hall podcast. Subscribe. Listen to us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Five-star reviews. Five-star reviews. We love them. <laughs> and don't forget to subscribe to our weekly newsletter from link to LeeSummit.com. We will talk to everybody on Monday. You have been listening to Lee Summit Town Hall, a link to Lee Summit podcast with hosts Nick Parker and Jason Norberry. A proud member of the Fredcast Network, you can subscribe to this podcast on most of your favorite podcast apps and catch us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for all the news, analysis, and conversations on the Lee Summit community. Connect with us on Facebook at Link to Lee Summit or on Twitter at LS Town Hall. <laughs>